Hi everyone, I'm Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you for joining me today for yet another episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. Uh, so this quilt, I know I'm gonna catch some grief about uh, in the comments. Bring them on, okay? Because this is one of those quilts that I don't like. I, um, yeah, I just don't like it. And I'll explain why I don't. Um, it took me a little bit to figure that out. So just to understand my process, the first thing I do when I'm getting ready to make these videos is I lay the quilt out on the floor and I really analyze it. And I try to see what's interesting about it, what's done well, maybe what's not done well. And I make my list of what lessons can be learned from it and all of that. Uh, so I had this one on, on my floor and could not figure out what I didn't like about it. And it took a little bit of time. I even asked my husband, I'm like, well, what are you seeing? Are you seeing the same thing I am? You know, he came up with some of the same things that I saw. So I am interested to find out what you think. Before we do get into that though, I wanna talk about first, it is a flimsy, you know, meaning that it's a quilt top only. It's not a finished quilt. It is also, um, I am also very sensitive to the fact that this is an old piece and that fabrics were not accessible like they are now. So um, I get that. I, you know, I'm sensitive to that. This maker probably used the best products and the best fabrics that um, he or she had available. And it is absolutely a scrap quilt. So it was anything left over. Uh, it is all cotton fabrics, but still it's anything left over. And I feel like it was piece together that way. But, you know, also I think it is my responsibility, especially some of you who are new to quilting, to point out some of the issues with this quilt and to point out what I don't like about it too. So that's my disclaimer. Um, I totally understand um, there might be some people out there, and I'm sure there are, that absolutely love this quilt. For me, it wasn't my cup of tea. Let's take a closer look at this quilt and you can decide. Okay, as we take a closer look at this quilt, we can see it's made up of four patches and alternating solids. So we see the four patch right here. And then uh, it actually makes a nine patch when we go to here. If we have a nine patch that's made up of um, four patch, solid, four patch, solid, four patch, solid, four patch, solid four patch. And that's the way I believe this was built just from looking at the back that it was made in these nine patches and then put together. Now the piecing on it is done all by machine. So it, um, you can see that there is some puckering and I, I believe the tension was a little too tight, but overall, I mean, the piecing is pretty good. The points are, are on for the most part. There's a few little places that they aren't. You can tell that the maker tried to ease in pieces, which was good. That was a good technique to use. And I'm sure a lot of this wrinkling and puckering would quilt out if it were ever quilted. We see solids most of the time, solids to solids with um, two prints. And usually, not always, but usually the prints match and the solids match. And of course, right on my screen, you can see one that's uh, breaks that rule, right? <laughs> okay, we have the two solids, but we have two prints here that are different. And here we even see, if I move this up, you can see that there aren't any solids in this, but the coordinating sides do match. And it's a really great scrappy quilt in the fact that it uh, showcases a lot of different cool fabrics and it does stick to kind of these rules. Now, where the maker, in my opinion at least, got into trouble was using different color blues. It would have been better if the maker would have distributed these fabrics differently and maybe mixed up those colors because what we see instead are bands or sections that are uh, one particular solid uh, background and um, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb when you look at the quilt as a whole. You see these giant bands of color and it's distracting to the eye. I think it would have been more interesting, at least in my opinion, if the maker had either stuck with one color of the background or mixed up those backgrounds. Uh, we wouldn't notice at least, it would blend in better. Okay, if we look at the back of the quilt, we also see some issues. Um, we see some pressing issues and uh, the maker didn't uh, always make sure things were nested together. And what I mean that, by that, when I say that, is that the the seams were going opposite directions so they would work well together. And uh, that caused a lot of problems. Like right here, we see a problem where this wasn't pressed well and the maker didn't go back and actually fix that and make it a little bit better. Now, is this the end of the world? No, it it's definitely a mistake makers 
make. And it is something, I mean, you can make beautiful quilts and still do this and they will quilt out. But you know, overall, you'll have a better time of it if you make sure that you press your seams to either open or to one side and then press the seams of the next block to the other way so they come together and lay flat. And then you don't have stuff like this where you have seams that are laying this way and seams that are laying this way. So overall, that's an issue, but you know, plenty of makers do that and don't really pay attention to that. And it's probably not a good thing, but it is something that happened here. And uh, I think just over the years, there's some fraying that occurred uh, from this on the fabrics, but overall it's a pretty good shape. The back's in pretty good shape with the exception of maybe those nesting seams and the th seams not quite laying right. So let's turn it back over and let's look at some of the cool fabrics. So I would say this is not an antique quilt, probably vintage. Uh, I am seeing some fabrics here that I have in my stash or had in my stash. So I would say it's probably 20 years old, 25 maybe. Uh, and then the maker took old fabrics and used them up too in this because we do see some fabrics from the 1930s and 1940s as well in this. Uh, so speaking of which, we have this really darling Christmas print here. Uh, we also have this fabric, which I know I recognize because I had a panel. It was teddy bears, um, uh, Christmas teddy bears. So I recognize that, pieces of that. Um, we have some, those cheater quilts, which are printed they, to look like quilts. We have that fabric. And we have some really neat examples of fabric. So overall, that's, that's really cool to have in this quilt is the different fabrics and to see the different prints that were available. They are all 100% cotton and they are all in pretty good shape. There aren't any holes or any issues that way in this quilt. We do see where there isn't a consistency with the sight lines. And I'll put uh, a black and white photo here of that. Uh, you can see here, for example, in this block, let me get it on the screen, we have a sight line going right up through here, but then we get a break in that here. And your mind goes, what the heck, where am I supposed to look? So be careful about that. Either make them all a little wonky or be careful to put it when you're putting sight lines together, if that makes sense. So um, maybe even one or two of these turned would have helped with that, or the maker could have done a complete sight line all the way through and made a secondary design, say even a diamond, if the sight lines were paid attention to. One last block I wanna show you that actually breaks all the rules is this one. So um, I think the maker used the same fabrics, but because the prints uh, were, at least these two were large scale prints, they don't necessarily look like the same fabric. There's definitely darker darker pieces here and lighter pieces here. So it it's interesting in that it kind of gives you this hourglass feel to it, but it's also a little distracting. And then when we get to the plaids, we see uh, one plaid here, and then the plaid is probably from the same cut, but you can see that it was a lightened section of that. So just be aware of that when you're making scrap quilts. Now, this might be your cup of tea. You might absolutely love this, and that's great, you know, and that's what makes the world go around. We have all different kinds of ideas about things, and we see things differently. For me, this quilt top, just doesn't work. And it actually drives me a little crazy when I look at it. I, I don't know where to look and my mind kind of goes all crazy. So uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this quilt. It looks really great folded on my ladder. So that might be where it stays. It's just folded up and never finished. I hate to say that because I like to see quilts come to life. You know, so if you have any suggestions, let me know what you think. If there's anything that you think that could really change this quilt for the better, let me know. I would love to hear. So some lessons we can learn from this maker, and there are quite a few, okay? And I'm gonna start with something positive. It's a wonderful scrappy quilt, right? It is a one, it has great, there's a great bunch of pieces and so they're very interesting fabrics and you know, you absolutely can tell it's scrappy and that it was anything left over. I love that, um, you know, and it really adds interest, all these different fabrics. If you're making a scrappy quilt, keep that in mind that you're going to wanna to add some interest and you're gonna add lots of different fabrics and it really helps bring it all together because it's interesting to look at. The next thing though, maybe isn't as positive, okay? Um, although the, the 
Maker use different tones of the blue fabrics. I, first of all, I think that's great. I think that that works. You know, if if they would have been distributed evenly throughout, or not evenly, but if they would have been distributed. Uh, but instead, we see this band of the darker blue, the turquoise. Uh, we see some lighter. They're in groupings. And for me and for my eye, that doesn't work well. Uh, it would have been better, I think, if the maker would have mixed them up and put them in different areas, and then it would have made it a little bit more interesting. And lastly, those sight lines where we're seeing the darks and the lights are all zigzaggy and they're all over the place and they hurt my eyes. I, you know, I couldn't follow anything. My eyes didn't know where to land. So when you're making quilts, make sure you're keeping in mind those values of fabrics. And like I've said before, and I'll, I'll put it here, you know, a good way to see the value of the fabrics is to uh, take a black and white picture. And when I say value, I mean the color saturation, the, the amount of, of color in those uh, fabrics. And you can see here by the black and white photo of this, particular quote that there's lines everywhere and they go in all different directions. So that's something to just keep in mind as makers and something we can absolutely learn from this quilt top. I'd love to hear from you and what you think about this quilt top. Should I finish it? Should I just keep it folded on my ladder that I have? and just have it on display because it doesn't look bad if it's just a small chunk, right? Uh, or what do you think? And again, I just, I really am sensitive to the fact that the materials might not be, um, not might not have been as available as they are now, or, you know, maybe the maker just wanted to get the cool top done. Maybe it was a necessity, you know, and uh, the maker was hoping to finish it. Maybe it was needed. Um, maybe it was a customer's quilt, who knows? Uh, but, you know, it is, one of those things that probably sat in the maker's cabinet and obviously never got finished. And I'm wondering if it's because it just didn't sparkle enough, I'm not sure. But anyway, let me know what you think. Am I being too critical? Oh, what are your thoughts on this quote? Thanks again for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. I have a weekly vlog and I have a weekly organization challenge and some tutorials sprinkled in there. And uh, I'll see you next time, bye.